It's amazing to me how many marketing agencies literally have no web presence and then are out in the market every day saying you need a web presence. At the, the basic level, you just need something. And you need something that makes you look credible. Welcome to Show Me The Nuggets, where each week, Joe chats with world-class entrepreneurs to find out the key principles, strategies, and processes that lie behind their outstanding achievements. Now, your host, the no-bullshit serial entrepreneur, Joe Troyer. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys uh, what I'm calling the Digital Marketing Agency MVP Word website. So what does MVP stand for? It stands for minimum viable product, right? It is a base. It is there ready for you to make the most of, but all of the main elements are there. And we'll talk about what all of those main elements are in order for me to consider it minimum viable, right? Um, but I want to make sure that you see here that I also said WordPress. See, at the end of the day, there's lots of page builders out there. There's lots of funnel builders out there. Uh, you, you know them. We don't need to talk about them. The go-to solution, the right solution as an agency owner, I fully believe for a website is WordPress. Still to this day, bar none. So let's get into things, folks. What do you need in an MVP, a minimum viable product, a minimum viable digital agency uh, website, right? First off, like you just need something. It's amazing to me how many marketing agencies literally have no web presence and then are out in the market every day saying you need a web presence. At the, the basic level, you just need something. And you need something that makes you look credible. But you should at least talk about, in general, broad strokes, the types of things that you do. I think then you should have anywhere from five to seven blog posts to start that show expertise and marketing knowledge. Let's say that um, your primary service offering um, is Google Maps and your first offer, you, you know, your kind of core that you sell everybody, let's say, is reputation management. And the reason that you do that is because they get a bunch of reviews, right? They start ranking in Google because it's a third of the ranking al algorithm, right? And then they, they're they hooked, right? They want more. They want to rank better, right? They, they did reputation because they wanted more calls from the internet. Um, and now a bunch of your work is done and, and you can transition them and, and show them, here are the things that you need to do in order to rank well, right? So if those are your main services. Those should be listed on your website. And then talking about the blog posts, right? You're going to want to write, again, I think anywhere from five to seven blog posts that show expertise and marketing knowledge around those services, around those things that you do. And that can be lots of things, right? That could be a tutorial. That could be a listicle. That could be uh, statistics. Right. So if you're talking about reputation management, there's a ton of statistics out there. And if you go over to reviewgrower.com and then to resources on that resources page, you can grab a whole list of reputation quotes uh, that I pulled together uh, and the team over at Review Grower. And you can opt in. You can grab those. And that's something that you could share. OK, you should then, I believe, in the blog posts or uh, on the site, you should have some samples of your work. Okay, when we look out there at digital marketing agency websites, most of them have no examples of work that they've done. Okay, like literally none, right? And that doesn't mean if you're just getting started that you got to show like the best case study since sliced bread for, you know, and, and show something that you don't have. I'm not saying that, right? Do some pro bono work, right? Like literally redesign a logo or re or, or write a piece of content, right? Or do a GMB audit, right? And then like literally use those as the examples if you have no other samples of work or if you're not happy with them. Folks, if you do what we've talked about so far, that's more than like 90% of the marketing agency websites out there. Next up, you should have some reviews on there, right? We talked about reputation management. We talked about getting reviews, uh, especially if you're going to be selling it. And just if you're a digital marketing agency, you should have some reviews yourself, right? And getting those reviews can be really simple, right? Literally 
texting a friend, texting somebody you've done some business with, right? Texting somebody that can can vouch to your character and just asking them with conviction. And then lastly on this is that you should have some type of conversion mechanism or mechanisms, right? Like if somebody, if you're building this, so when somebody goes and looks at it, that you look good, they trust your expertise, then obviously you're going to want them to actually be able to convert into a prospect, right? To convert into a customer. So you need some type of conversion mechanism or mechanisms to do that, right? Like the easiest one would just be like a contact us page, right? And um, having that is great, right? But you probably want to take it a step further. You want to do an SEO audit, right? What if you could do that? Right. That's going to be better than some type of SEO, you know, report or lead magnet. Right. Free book about SEO or free SEO audit. Which one's better? The audit. Right. So um, having a couple different conversion um, elements on your site. And preferably more than just a, a free report. Right. You give or a, a free ebook. You give something actionable, a free report or something more valuable. Right. You don't just only have a contact us. And in terms of value. Right. You know, um, a free audit. Uh, a con- I would say like a contact page, a free audit, a free ebook. You know, think about in, in your niche and in your vertical. Like what what would it be that that your clients would want to see? All right, so WordPress 101. Now that we've covered kind of the the prerequisites and the things that you really got to have, let's talk about WordPress, right? So what do you have to understand? So one of the things about WordPress that's great is also one of the things that sucks about WordPress, right? It's like, it's a catch-22. So there's always, always, always updates, right? Like WordPress is updating all the time. And then because WordPress is updating, um, something called plugins and themes, right? That that attach to WordPress, that go inside WordPress, that extend it, that add more options, add more design options, add more uh, configuration options. Those have to be updated as well to work with the latest version of WordPress. So understand that there are always updates. The platform is always pushing forward, which is a good thing but it it leaves some maintenance that you're going to have to do number one and it's not that hard right the maintenance is really simple the maintenance is keep the themes and the plugins up to date and keep wordpress up to date uh even though that there's always these updates um the core of wordpress never changes and i've been using wordpress for a really really long time it has come so far it's not even funny and it used to just be a blogging platform obviously now it's a whole website builder uh, and blogging platform but like this core things that i'm about to walk through hasn't changed since then so pages are pages <laughs> that doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh Posts or posts, blog posts, right? So posts are all going to blog inside of a blog, and they're going to have categories and authors associated with those posts. Pages are not going to be inside the blog. So your homepage is going to be a page, right? Like your privacy policy, your terms of service are going to be a page. You wouldn't want those inside your blog because you're going to want to put those like in your header, in your footer. um, And you don't want those just like randomly in your blog as somebody's scrolling through, right? Uh, If you got sales pages, those will be in there. Your service pages, those will be pages, not posts. Um, So that's the, the primary difference there between pages and posts. Uh, media, media is where you upload your images, right? Like literally that simple. Um, I don't host any videos in WordPress, only images. All my videos are hosted outside. Uh, menus, menus is just what it sounds like, right? Uh, in your themes and in your page builders, you can use menus and menus will be for like your header or your footer navigation. Um, themes then is how you control design right? How you control the layout, how you control the design, the usability of the site. Plugins, though, are typically used to extend the functionality of the WordPress core functions, right? So we've been talking about core functions here. You know, there's plugins for SEO. So you can set 
page titles and descriptions and which pages you want to be indexed and which pages you don't want to be indexed. Those are, um, you know, they, they extend WordPress's native abilities. Then ultimately, there, there's other things like backup tools. And, um, you know, if you end up using a page builder like Elementor or Divi or Thrive Architect, these tools now have started to operate like almost like themes where they help you with design aspects, not just um, site function as well. Uh, and they're plugins, right? So this completely revolutionized WordPress, I believe, when these started coming out. So then users, just what it sounds like, you know, you got administrators that can do everything. You got authors that can just write, uh, et cetera. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, folks, um, the only users that I use anymore are admins, honestly. Uh, next, in tools, um, there's a whole menu or submenting for submenu for tools. One of the things that you should get comfortable with is the import and export options. Uh, at the bottom, there's uh, there's a settings navigation, and in there, there's there's uh, quite a few sub navigation items. But specifically, you should check out general, reading, discussions, and permalinks. So general is going to be like, what website URL do you want to show? Do you want to show the www version? Do you want the website homepage to be at, you know, uh, yourdomain.com slash blog? Uh, what do you want the front page to be, which is like the root of the website? Do you want it to be like a blog style? Um, or do you want to have a static homepage, right? Uh, do you want to have your blog hosted at, you know, um, yourdomain.com slash blog, but that's not the homepage? right? Um, all those things are set up in, in general. I would suggest turning off comments. Look at the end of the day, like nobody's going to drop a comment for you. Like, let's be realistic. Like your audience coming to this website is going to be really, really small. Um, spammed comments are ridiculous. They're like taking over the internet and have been forever. Um, comments aren't valuable because you're not going to get real comments. Okay, next up is permalinks. And permalinks is basically your URL structure. So what do you want your URLs to look like? If you publish a new page on your on your site, let's say you publish uh, let's say you publish a terms of service page. What do you want the URL to be? Yourdomain.com question mark p equals 125. Well, that's what WordPress is typically set at as default. But you can have it um come up as post name so it'd be like literally you know you write up uh you know a terms of service page you can and the title is terms of service you can have the url automatically without you having to edit or change it be slash terms of service so back over to uh theme and, and page builders um Really, again, to, to recap, you used to only have themes to control design, and now you have plugins like Elementor can control design. And this is a game changer. I think the first time I ever saw this was when uh, a tool called Optimize Press first launched. And it was a way to add nice like graphics to sales pages, and guarantee box and FAQ boxes and things like that. Super nice design. And um, you could add them to your pages. You could add them to your posts. And the cool thing was, is that you didn't have to, um, you didn't have to use a dedicated theme. It was a plugin, right? So it integrated with any theme. And this was a freaking game changer, right? And um, I, I think it took way longer than it should have for this to really catch on. But now you got full page builders um, out there that are just fantastic. For example, I used to love Divi, um, but I think it's just way harder to teach. And um, honestly, it's harder to, to use, I believe, uh, than a tool like Elementor. Uh, I really, really like the Elementor visual builder way more. Um, than Divi, just personal preference. I think they're, Divi's um, a hard learning curve to get past for sure. All right, guys, so this is the deal. Uh, these days, I suggest a company called WP Engine for hosting. Um, and I got a page on the Digital Trigger site, by the way, which is a recommends page. And um, it's not like just a rehashed you know, review page. It's all the things that I use actively inside of my business. Uh, they're all things that that I 
support, I endorse, I enjoy, um, you know, and, and I keep that thing current. So if you go to digitaltriggers.io slash WP engine, this is my affiliate link. If you give me, uh, if you use that, I will get an affiliate commission. I would be very grateful. But if you don't think I deserve it or you just don't want to give it to me, you can just go to WPEngine.com as well. And here's the deal. Like, if you've been following me for a long time, you'll know that for quite a few years, I recommended this shared hosting company. And when you talk about shared hosting companies, like they're very economical, right? They're like, you know, the host gators of the world, the GoDaddies of the world, sites like that, really super cheap hosting, you know, $5 to $10 a month hosting accounts and you get multiple domains. So um, I stumbled across a unicorn when I started recommending those. And the reason I started recommending those is like we were building private blog networks and we had hundreds of domains and, you know, cost was really a factor, you know, uh, at 20 bucks uh, a month per domain for really good hosting, let's say, um, you know, at a hundred domains, that becomes a lot. Whereas with these guys, let's say I could get 10, five to 10 sites for, you know, $5 a month, $10 a month, you know, if it comes out to a dollar per domain per month, right? And I got a hundred or 200 sites, that's a hundred to 200 bucks a month. That's not bad, right? If I use somebody like WP Engine and it's like $20 a month per domain, that's a lot, right? Very different story. We're at 20 times the price. So um, understand that um, most of my sites were on the shared hosting sites because they were unicorns, right? They were super cheap, but I have found this special unicorn. And what I mean by that is, um, in my experience, shared hosting support sucks. You're talking from somebody from a different company, a uh, different um, country that doesn't understand your language, that doesn't really understand uh, the, the job that they're doing, meaning they don't understand WordPress, they don't understand hosting, they're not that experienced. They're kind of like a level one support person. Their job is to take your message and pass it on to somebody else. Well, we've all dealt with those companies. And, uh, you know, when I have a website that's down, I need that website to come back up quickly, right? And I need the issue resolved fast. What I don't want to happen is I go from a chat or an, a first email message to, you know, then getting escalated up the chain and it taking four or five days, right, to get my issue fixed. And that's what happens typically with these shared hosting providers. It happened that I stumbled across this unicorn though. And this unicorn was like new on the scene, this company, and I'm not gonna bash them, I'm not gonna say their name out loud, um, but they were new on the scene. They had amazing support. Like you're talking to like their, their server technicians when you're asking a question, right? And so you're just getting, you know, grade A support at shared hosting prices. Um, the performance wasn't that great, but they had some upgrades for performance. But like all in all, it was a steal. And I, I supported them for, for quite a few years. Um, but what I found is that all these companies, these hosting companies, when they start small, they're very aggressive in price. And a lot of them try to have really good support. And they can while they're small, but it's never sustainable. And these hosting companies, most of them are either VC backed at the beginning or they become venture capital backed over time. Um, there's a lot of money in hosting. And when this happens, these things grow so fast, right? They grow so fast, they can't keep up with support. Support goes to garbage. And so now, now you got no advantage, right? You're on shared level hosting. The sites are slow. They're getting bogged down. Uh, because there's even more people on all the shared servers, right? And now the support sucks. So my motto has changed, right? My thought has changed. Uh, my hosting uh, suggestion has changed. And um, for probably three years now, I've been using WP Engine and I love them. Um, look, uh, they, they're fast on most of my sites, all of my sites. I don't have to do anything to optimize for speed. They already got it. Right. I'm pretty sure they already have like a CDN. Right. They already, you know, they already do the things that you should do to have a speedy site. Unless you've just like went to town doing a bunch of naughty stuff, um, you know, just bloating the heck out of your site. It's probably going to be fine the way that it is. They also have uh, like built in 
um, backup. So they do daily backups on your site for you. When you're going through the process of like backing up your site or when you're going through the process of like upgrading WordPress and upgrading plugins, they have like an on-demand backup feature too. So literally hit one button and like it's so fast in like two minutes, it's done doing the backup. And then I'm like, update all plugins. Wait for it to be done. Check out the site. Is it good? Yep, it's good. All right. Now I need to go update the theme. All right, great. Let me do a backup quick. Two minutes later. All right, great. Like super happy with like their their platform, their technology, their speed. Um, they also handle like DDoS attacks if you've ever experienced any of those uh, and a lot of security for WordPress. And then the last thing I'll say, and this sounds like just like a blowing endorsement, but it is, is that their support is awesome, right? Like they know what they're talking about. Their technicians are helpful. Um, they, they live chat is always there answering and engaging with you. Um, you know, I've had very few issues with my sites since moving to WP Engine. And those of you guys that have been on like some crappy WordPress hosting, you know what it's like, lots of problems all the time. You just want to pull out your hair. I, I don't want to have to go to somebody on Fiverr or Upwork or whatever to fix these crazy WordPress issues because my site's down when I can just go to WP Engine and they'll they'll help me, right? <laughs> If I get hacked, I don't want to have to pay somebody to fix it. I just want to go hit the support bubble here, right? And say, hey, guys, my website got hacked. Can you fix it? And they will, right? So for me, WP Engine is a no-brainer. Uh, again, if you want to use my affiliate link, there's a coupon that you get as well by using it, digitaltriggers.io slash WP Engine. All right. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to get your MVP website up. Have a freaking awesome day, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this little gem today. Joe Chorter, signing out. Thanks for tuning in and show me the nuggets. If you've been enjoying the podcast and find our content helpful, please visit our Apple podcast page, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a review. Joe and the whole team have been working hard to bring more value to the show. More feedback will go a long way in helping us make the show better and reach a wider audience.